Hello fellow cheapskates and budget gamers, on this channel I recently talked about 10 of the best free Switch games you can go out, download and play without having to pull that old wallet out of your pocket and spend any actual cash on them. And you cheapskates seem to really enjoy that video, so how about we keep the trend going with another one, however this time you will have to pull that wallet out, but you won't have to pull out more than a crisp $5 bill because you read the title and you guessed it, all of the games on this list today are are only five bucks. That really ain't too bad considering how fun they all truly are. And actually, funny enough, I tried making one of these videos almost exactly a year ago. Back then, I did find five really great games. So for this list to be a definitive list of the best $5 games on Switch, we still have to count those games. So when you're done here today watching this video, make sure to go and watch that other video if you want to find out more about those games because I already reviewed them once and why would I repeat myself? Ah, but enough of the games I've already talked about before, let's start this list by talking about a recent addition to the eShop library and that game is Daggerhood. Make sure you smash that subscribe button and click that bell and also hit the like button while you're going down there and let's get started. Oh man, really? My phone's ringing right now? Jordan Fringe? Hello? I was just watching your video with Kim. Isaac? Isaac? Really? Wood? Really? Shouldn't you be editing this video, like, oh, I don't know, right now, rather than calling me? Dude, aren't you freaking sponsored by Skillshare, like, all the time? You do realize that they have a course on accent reduction American pronunciation made easy, right? Yeah, yeah, all. Yeah. Yeah, all. Yeah, uh, okay, clearly this ain't working, y'all, but it's not like any of you guys are gonna be trying to learn how to do an American accent anyway. There are so many things on this site that you can learn. Skillshare is an online learning community for creators with more than 25,000 classes in design, business, video editing, video production, and more. You can even learn how to create gaming content for YouTube if you wanna start your own channel. The premium memberships give you unlimited access so you can join the classes and and communities that are right for you. And just like last time, the first 500 of you to go down to that description, click on my special secret link, will get two months of Skillshare free, which means you can save your money for these $5 games that I'm already trying to help you save money on anyway. What would you do without me? But speaking of those $5 games, let's go back and talk about them. If you're looking for a Celeste-like experience on the Switch, but you don't want to pay a Celeste-like price, then Daggerhood might be the game for you. Visually, the similarities speak for themselves. The gameplay, though, differs quite a bit thanks to the instant transmission dagger mechanic. As you would expect, by throwing your dagger, you can mince up any enemy that stands in your way. But as you might not expect, you can also teleport to your dagger at the touch of a button. This gives Daggerhood a completely different feel to its platforming mechanic than any other game I've played in this style. Each level has five treasures for you to collect, as well as a fairy, which you only have a limited time to reach before it disappears. Where in Celeste we had huge levels to explore, with branching paths and hidden rooms, Daggerhood keeps it simple, with very small levels that will only take you moments to complete once you have mastered that level. I'm not saying you jump into every new level fresh and you finish it in a moment, what I'm saying is once you've died several times and you get the hang of it, you can blast through these pretty fast. The challenge, of course, comes in trying to acquire all the collectibles and getting to the exit as fast as possible to get that three-star rating we all crave. Oh, and the boss battles are pretty cool. This is honestly a game I would expect to cost about $10, so seeing it for five is a great deal. You know what's really cheap? Canned peas. But if you don't like canned peas because of the mushy mouthfeel, you might like this pea because it's awesome. Awesome pea. Awesome P starts the same way many of our favorite NES games started. Title screen, start game, just like that. No story, no words, no instructions, no nothing. You're a freaking P, start platforming and enjoy the game. Games like this are just refreshing for me sometimes. When you just feel like picking up a game and playing it without having to prepare your mind and soul to become invested in some groundbreaking story or try to kickstart your brain and learn crazy new gameplay mechanics. Nah, not here, you just play the game. 
The game's visuals tug at my nostalgic heartstrings big time. Clearly, I have never played this game before, and yet it feels like I'm driving down memory lane and reliving an old favorite title, especially when I see that overworld map. It doesn't help my nostalgia that the entire game has scan lines, making you feel like you're playing it on an old CRT TV. And the visuals themselves look like every great Game Boy game I ever owned. It's a very simple platforming game where you have to collect coins and avoid spikes, but it has some very solid gameplay and I just find it ever so charming. So even though it's technically $5.99, that old marketing ploy where it looks like $5, but it's actually $6, I'm allowing it on this list because it is a fun budget game, around $5. It's not the hardest platformer you'll ever play, it presents a challenge sometimes, for the most part, it's just an enjoyable experience. Actually, we've had a lot of the best cheap Switch games released recently on the Switch, and I have already jumped on them and talked about them in other videos. But I can't make this list and not mention these games, especially Downwell, because it might actually be my favorite budget game on the Switch. Just in case you missed it, this is what I said about Downwell recently. At just $2.99, Downwell is absolutely worth the price and then some. Just just like Bayonetta, you have gun boots that pack a huge punch that keep you afloat for just a moment while you blast away at any enemies or bricks directly below you. Downwell is so simple in design, from its 8-bit visuals to its gameplay mechanics, but its fast-paced action is hard to put down, making it a perfect pick-up-and-play-a-few-rounds kind of game, which is exactly what you want on the Switch. The further down into the dark well you fall, the harder and weirder the enemies become. You fall at such insane speed you only have a split second moment to decide if you should squash, dodge, or shoot your way through the next obstacle. You will find more than you expect in the well, from shops where you can buy helpful items or hidden caves filled with relics. And after every stage, you get to pick a power up, or if you're lucky, get some health back since your hit points carry over level to level. This game is not easy. It took me more attempts than I would like to admit just to get to the fourth level, so bring your A game or prepare to go down. And now for a game I haven't talked about about before, Toki Tori. Toki Tori was originally released on the Game Boy Color, and let me tell you, there is a reason that since then, it's been re-released on Android, Wii, PS3, Wii U, the 3DS, and now the Switch. And that reason is, wait for it, it's, it's a good game. I didn't really have anything extra for that. What did you expect? <laughs> but now it's looking better than ever with a fresh coat of paint. The sequel to this game, Toki Tori 2, released on the Switch a while back and did so well, they decided to bring the original to the system too and make it cheaper, about five bucks worth of cheaper. In each of the 80-ish levels, it's your job to collect all of the eggs, which is a pretty cute premise, a little chicken going around saving these little eggs from harm until you get to the end of the game and you hit the credits and you see this, it's just kind of sad. <laughs> Moving very quickly along, let's talk about the gameplay mechanics. Taking a page from the Prince of Persia Book of Tricks, you can rewind time if you screw up, which is not only used for if you die stupidly, but also as a key mechanic to help you complete puzzles. You have a bunch of different abilities available to you as well, like building blocks or paths. And I'm not sure where this tiny little chicken is keeping these massive blocks, but he doesn't seem like the kind of guy that I want to mess with, so I'm not going to ask any questions. Please don't turn me into an omelet. I know I said I don't like repeating myself, but I can't in all good consciousness make this list and not talk about Gunman Clive. I fell in love with this game, and recently I found two excuses to talk about it on the channel. And now we're in a third, a third and final excuse to talk about this game. When I cover this many eShop games, there's gonna be some overlap. <laughs> So let's take one final look at Gunman Clive. So if you haven't seen or played Gunman Clive before, the first thing that should be going through your brain right now while you look at this footage is, oh boy, that art style is incredible. It feels like the game is being hand-drawn to life right in front of your eyes as you platform and shoot your way through every level. And speaking of the platforming and the shooting, this 
gameplay is very similar to the Mega Man series. You'll have to face platforming challenges like the ground falling away underneath your feet at a moment's notice, or maybe Tetris blocks raining from the sky as you struggle not to get trapped and squished between them. There are so many unique platforming concepts just like this as you play and it constantly keeps you on your toes. And obviously the bosses won't go down without a fire. You better learn those attack patterns and learn them fast or you're gonna find yourself getting very frustrated. One level you have to jump on a panda's back and run desperately away from a giant spinning sword blade of death or sometimes the game will completely change and you'll think you're playing Space Harrier again, a third person on rail shooter or maybe you'll be on horseback trying to jump over obstacles and shoot the cowboys next to you. I am almost positive that many of you when you saw that title and clicked on this video you came here hoping to see Astro Bears. And I know that because Astro Bears is beloved by so many Switch players already. It's just one of those games that always, always gets suggested to me to talk about. And despite the fact that it's only five bucks and consistently goes on sale for around a dollar, I never actually got around to playing it until now. And uh, yeah, no, I, uh, I completely understand it now. It's stupidly fun. I judged a book by its cover and didn't think I was gonna enjoy it. I enjoy it. It's great. Let's talk about it. It's so incredibly simple in concept, but such fun to play with a friend or even three friends. If you have three friends. I personally, I don't. Not nearby anyway. So I've done the two player with Kim. It was good. It's essentially Tron, but with bears and in space, so what's not to love? You and whoever you are playing with run around this tiny little sphere, creating a colored trail behind you as you go. And all you need to worry about is not running into the other player's colored line. And if you haven't played Tron, just think old school Snake. You know, the kind we all used to play on our brick phones, except you're playing with more players. It is really easy to become super competitive with rounds becoming nail-bitingly close ducking, jumping, weaving, and squeezing between enemy lines. And the rounds are so short. It's super easy to keep on challenging each other to just one more round. A perfect party game, and for the price, you cannot go wrong. Plus, as I said, this game just seems to always be on sale. I'm actually only realizing this now, even though I already wrote out this entire video yesterday, the games on this list are super varied, which is awesome. I don't think there's really any overlap in game style. And that goes equally so for the next game on this list, which is One Strike. Another game I talked about very recently, so let's take a quick look at it. For only $4.99, this is another cheapy cheap game worth the price. You have three difficulty settings, easy, medium, or hardcore, and trust me, you'll want to start on easy. As the name of the game would suggest, you get hit once, you die. You hit your opponent once, they die. There is seven different fighters to choose from, each of which have different weapons and fighting styles. Believe it or not, with just having a forward dash, back dash, block, and one attack button, it still takes quite a while to master each fighting style of the characters. In one life mode, just like in real life, you only got one. You can't get hit by any of these fighters, even once. And I'm telling you, that's not easy, even on easy. There is also arcade and team duel mode, as well as tournament mode for up to eight players, AI or real people. Again, it's another game that's just so simple in design and gameplay. And yet, as soon as you block that first attack and then land the killing strike, you'll watch your opponent fall and then realize I just want to keep on killing. All right, so I just said that this list is full of very unique and different games. And that couldn't be any more true for this next one, which is not only unique for this list, but it's unique for gaming in general. I have never seen a game quite like this. Let's take a look at Peace Death. Peace Death is a very simple and yet, as I said, very unique game. You play as the Grim Reaper himself, deciding the fate of those that pass through into the afterlife. And how do you make your decisions? By judging people based on how they look. Um, excuse me, is it still 2019? You can't assume my afterlife. Well, actually, in this game, you can. <laughs> As the Grim Reaper, this is your probation period at work to determine whether or not you are actually qualified for the job. So every screw up, every mistake, every wrong person sent to hell or incorrect person sent to heaven over the next seven week period, yeah, it could cost you your job. So don't go sending people to hell willy nilly just because you don't like the cut of their jib. Early in the game, your choices will be obvious. Demons go to hell, superheroes go to heaven. Adoy. 
But as you progress, making that choice will become harder and harder. A character might be hiding their true identity, like maybe they have horns under their hat, or are standing in a pool of blood that's easy to miss. Also, you're able to test them, see if they're willing to change and let go of that gun they're holding, or if they're committed to their life of sin. Testing people and making the right choice accordingly can be tough, as well as having the option to send some people to purgatory. Honestly, in this game, I'm mostly impressed by the sheer amount of sprites they designed. Sure, it's only a $5 game and a simple concept, but the amount of time it must have took to design all of these characters. And each of them really stand out and are unique enough to make every choice feel more difficult than the last. Now, unless you don't care and you just want to send everyone to hell. I mean, that's your prerogative. You might get fired, but hey, you had a good time doing it. You know, making this list of $5 games and that other list of free games on the Switch, I found something really interesting in that the free games were more often than not more grand in scale. These huge open world games. They were more graphically impressive. They could do a lot more and you could arguably sink a lot more time into the free games than these ones that you actually have to pay for. While all of these games are really great and I had a ton of fun with them and absolutely worth the price, you can tell by looking at them they're a $5 game, right? It's a budget title and you can see that. You're paying for a budget title, but you're getting a good time. I don't know, for me it's an interesting food for thought. I'm not trying to say anything, I just think it's really curious going from that list to this list and seeing how different the games are and seeing the budget cheaper shorter games being the ones you have to pay for while the bigger is the ones you get for free. With all that being said, if you like this video or you learned a little something, make sure you have flip all over that subscribe button. Smash like on the video as well while you're down there. Maybe even leave a comment with what great games you've been playing lately. Speaking of free, you know what else is free? My pit stains.